Now take a look at this. This is the same query we just saw. But who wants to always put select customer table dot customer number in there? That's too long. So we're going to alias the table names. Look at the from clause here. In our from clause, we're saying from customer table as cust and order table as ord. So now that we've aliased the table names, this makes fully qualifying so much easier. Now I can say select cust dot customer number, customer name, order number, order total from customer table as cust, order table as order. And then the where is going to be where cust dot customer number equals or dot customer number. That's the way you do it when you go big time. Now remember, SQL isn't always evaluated from first to last. The system's going to evaluate all of the SQL and come up with a plan to go get that data. I've color-coded some things here, so I really want to focus on a few things. Let's talk about the select list in the join. Notice that we're selecting four columns here, and only one of them, in blue, had to be fully qualified with the table alias in front of it, cust.customerNumber. This is because customer number is in both tables. Now, you're not hurting yourself by fully qualifying everything. I could have said, hey, I want cust.customer number, cust.customer name, ord.order number, and ord.order total. That would not have been a problem. But it's a rule that you have got to fully qualify any column that is in both tables because the system gets confused from obviously customer table as cust, order table as ord, and down below is the where clause again. You can see I've color coded cust.customer number and ord.customer number, and that's how you do joins. Select is easy. The only thing you remember is if a column's in both tables, I'll fully qualify that table name in front of it, and that's why I'm using those aliases to alias the table names so I can shorten the typing. And then, of course, the from's easy. I just list all the tables I'm joining together. It's that where clause that really is tricky when you're new to this. Before you write that SQL, you look at those two tables and say, I think Tom told me it's usually going to be the first column in one of those tables that's going to be the join key, as we would call that. And I'm going to look at that's over here, or I'm going to look at that's over here, and you're going to get excellent at joins. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Begin your Teradata journey the right way with our Teradata Basics book. Visit coughingdw.com for more information. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.